MSI Raider GE 78HX Core i9 13980HX Plus RTX 4090 Laptop Review and Testing MSI Company kindly provided MSI Raider GE 78HX Gaming Laptop with Top End Stuffing 13980HX Processor and RTX 4090 Graphics Card I found no arguments against it especially since MSI was almost in my hands, and the alien would still have to wait, and it could be stuck somewhere on the border because of sanctions. I decided to try the Taiwanese novelty. The year 2023 is the period when it's time for all gamers to upgrade, because a new generation of RTX 40 graphics cards has been released, which show a significant performance increase. I specifically waited for the RTX 4090 mobile graphics card to come out so I could play games in 4K at a comfortable frame rate that didn't run well on my RTX 3080, like Hitman 3 and Plague Tale. Laptop manufacturers offer to order from a broad Razer Blade 18, Alienware M18R1 or Asus ROG Strix Scar 18 with RTX 4090 but these devices are very expensive due to the fact that they must be ordered through resellers who want to eat a lot and want to make a good profit on you. The GE78HX is narrower than the 18-inch display variants, but it's also deeper. For comparison, it measures 380 by 400 mm and 3.05 kg, while the SCAR 18 measures 400 by 395 mm and 3.05 kg and the Blade 18 measures 400 by 375 mm and 3.2 kg. So, my point is that this Raider is not much smaller or lighter than the 18-inch models despite having a smaller display. There is massive RGB backlighting all around the front edge of the case. For this generation, MSI has opted for a pixelated design it calls the Matrix Light Bar. This light bar can also be controlled and turned off independently, although by default the light bar and MSI Dragon logo are tied to the keyboard's RGB effects settings. This laptop features a 17-inch 1610 aspect ratio display with a matte non-touch finish. This kind of format is common in productivity laptops from 2023. MSI offers two panel options for the GE78 Trader series. IPS QHD Plus with 2560 by 1600 px resolution, 400 nits peak brightness, 100% DCI-P3 color gamut. IPS FHD Plus with 1920 by 1200 px resolution, 300 nits peak brightness, 100% sRGB color gamut. Our device has the QHD Plus variant installed and I believe that's what you'll get in most configurations. By modern standards, it's a fairly high quality panel, with a clear and bright image and good viewing angles. Blacks aren't stunning when you turn up the brightness, so the contrast ratio is only 1100 to 1, but that's acceptable for most use cases. In addition, this panel is characterized by high refresh rate and fast response, which is a must for a modern gaming device. However, it does not support Xung, unlike many other 2023 generation models, as MSI decided to use the classic MUX in this series rather than the advanced Optimus MUX that almost everyone else is offering today. This is probably due to licensing or cost, as even in the past MSI didn't implement Xung on most of their internal laptop displays. The panel is well calibrated out of the box, but Gamma and White Point could be improved with further calibration. In the laptop, I decided to organize RAID 0 for increased speed of the disk subsystem. Generally there are GE78HX variants with two SSDs from the factory combined in RAID 0, but in my case there was only one SSD. For RAID 0 I needed to get two absolutely identical disks. I had these disks on hand. The first problem I encountered is that it is very difficult to open the bottom cover the first time. You can't stick anything anywhere around the perimeter, everything fits tightly. Experimentally established, first you need to remove the plastic overlay that sits behind the screen above the ventilation holes. Under the cover there are gaps where you can insert something, for example, a screwdriver. 
Then you need to open the cover by prying it with something from the back side to the front. All the latches will rattle and open. By default the SSDs are covered with some sort of thermal pad. I put two added a Legend 960 discs with glued heat sinks into my laptop and covered them with the default thermal pads on top. And could not close the lid. I had to peel off the standard thermal pads, because it was easier to tear them off than heat sinks with added a. After it the cover closed normally. There are holes in the bottom cover right above the SSD, so that should help with cooling the drives. In the BIOS I couldn't organize RAID right away. The problem was that VMD was grayed out in the BIOS menu and there was no way to enable it. Googling did not yield any results. MSI Tech Support behaved strangely and said, take the laptop to the service center and that's all. Fully working laptop. No one on the internet could not help me, and only a man under the nickname Atabots told me. In the BIOS you need to open the secret menu. To do this, press Ctrl plus Shift on the right and Alt plus F2 on the left. This brings up many new sections in the BIOS. We need system agent configuration. Next is the VMD setup menu. Enable VMD controller. Then reboot and Intel Rapid Storage Technology menu item appears in the BIOS. And there we create RAID as usual. I think it is logical to use RAID 0 for video editing. And as knowledgeable people write, real-time streaming video caching and video editing are common uses for RAID 0 because of its speed and performance. There is no reason to worry about RAID 0 failure. Added it gives a 5-year warranty on SSDs. I'm sure such disks are replaced with new ones before the warranty expires. Critical data should be stored in clouds where you can always access it from any other device. Windows is also easy to reinstall at any time. Also, SSDs in RAID 0 will wear out evenly than individually. Here are three screenshots of the speeds. The first is the stock Micron 3402TB drive that comes with a kit. The second screenshot is a single additive Legend 960 drive. The third is two Legend 960s combined in RAID 0. I covered the keyboard with a silicone case to preserve the product's appearance and to avoid dirt getting under the keyboard. You can easily buy such a case on AliExpress. You should look for a case for MSI GF76K Tana, they have absolutely identical keyboards with Raider GE78HX in terms of dimensions and key size. The MSI Raider GE78HX is a well-balanced full-size performance gaming laptop that doesn't skimp on any important specs, and is one of the most powerful implementations of Intel Core HX and RTX 4000 hardware. The laptop gets very hot inside if kept on a desk, so you need to keep it on a stand, and is only available in top-end and expensive configurations, otherwise it's a competitive option in its class. Now it's the turn of tests. I have done a lot of tests so any of the readers will be able to compare their PC with this laptop in the test they want, and evaluate how much better, or worse their PC is compared to this laptop. The comparison will be between the Alienware R17M41870H RTX 3080 and the MSI GE78139800HX RTX 4090. There is a two-year difference between the laptops, these are the top 2021 and the top 2023. 3080 versus 4090. I put all the tests together in one table. All test programs had the same version on both laptops. According to the tests of the CPU-Z program, we can see that in single threading the 13980 is almost twice as fast, although the frequency of a single core is not two times higher. Obviously, this is the result of processor core optimization. In multi-threading the new CPU is 3 times faster, although there are only 2 times more threads, 32 vs 16 Indiana 10870. I eat a 64 test start with memory. Here DDR4 with a frequency of 2933 MHz in 2 channel competes with DDR5 5600 MHz in 4 channel. Despite the fact that there are only two DDR5 modules, they work in quad-channel mode. By memory operations we see a two-fold increase.
the L2 processor cache turned out to be were on the same level, but the L3 cache read test showed a five-fold increase, which is surprising. In the processor tests the average advantage is 2.3 times. But this test stands out here. There the new 13980 processor showed a 6.7 times advantage. It's just a fantastic gap, as if the difference between the processors is not 2 years, but 6 years. The old 3 Mark 2001 test shows a two-fold increase. 3 Mark 03 gives a 90% increase. 3 Mark 05 was already hard on the new video card, it showed only 50% growth, and the processor 79%. In 3 Mark 06, the average gain was 62%. In 3 Mark 11, the average score was 58%. LAMP 3 Mark Vantage gives us a 77% boost on the graphics card, but the processor was rated just 37% better. Time Spy Extreme gave the graphics 177% and the processor 264%. Regular Time Spy rated the graphics card at 180% and the processor at 221%. The Port Royale test signaled an 87% superiority. In Fire Strike Ultra, the overall score is 80% better. In Fire Strike Extreme, the profit margin was 78%. Regular Fire Strike produced a 161% difference in the overall score. Wildlife test gives a 90% gain, while Wildlife Extreme is already 79%. Speedway shows an 84% gain. Night Rate evaluates the video card by two times more, and the processor by only 57%. A special CPU test from the 3 Mark Suite finds the new processor 73% faster in single threading and 2.4 times faster in multi threading. DirectX Ray Tracing feature test says that in Rays the new graphics card is 2.4 times faster. Mesh Shader test shows a difference of 2.6 times. Sampler feedback test gives 176% difference. PCI Express feature test shows a 2x difference, which makes sense since Alienware has PCIe version 4 and MSI already has PCIe 5. VRS feature test, whatever that means, shows a 2x difference. NVIDIA DLSS feature test shows 88% superiority of the new graphics card. The test was conducted in DLSS 2 mode, as the 3080 is not capable of DLSS 3. Skydiver showed a twofold difference, but CloudGate showed only 56% increase. Ice Storm Extreme and Ice Storm show about 67% superiority. Now let's go through the whole line of Unigen tests. Sanctuary showed 181% difference. Tropics is suddenly a difficult test minus 166% advantage. Valley and Heaven give 170% difference. Superposition in 1080p Extreme Profile gives 171% difference, and the Heavy Superposition 8K Optimized Mode already 159%. A series of tests API Overhead in DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 give about twofold difference but in Vulkan the difference is 3.1 times. So for games on Vulkan API RTX 4090 will show the biggest increase. And lastly, the gaming benchmark, STALKER call of Pripyat. In 2K resolution we have about 81% growth. Case temperature is usually not a problem for MSI models, as they are mostly plastic and thicker construction. The average surface temperature of the GE78 in gaming is around 32C on both top and bottom compared to 4344C on the Razer Blade 17. All hotspots in the system are located towards the back of the case and away from the front. Therefore, palms and fingers did not experience thermal discomfort while typing or gaming. A huge step forward has been made by MSI engineers in hinge design, compared to the GE77. Now the hinges will not break out of the case. What we can say from the results? The new generation of top-end mobile graphics cards does not disappoint and shows an average 80% increase in pairs and FPS. If you have a mobile 3080T, the difference won't be that noticeable and you'd be better off waiting for the 4090T.
and if you have a 3080, it's definitely worth upgrading to the 4090, if you have the money of course. You can wait for discounts, and maybe grab a cheaper device with the 4090 next year. There will definitely be discounts, as laptops with the 3080T that cost around $3,500 at launch are now selling for $2,000.